Hey everybody, this video is called Ark on the Move, and tonight we're going to continue our pass-through study in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 6, where we're looking at the Ark of the Covenant being moved into Jerusalem. And so chapter 6 verse 1 and 2 states, Again, David gathered all the choice men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people who were with him from Baali, Judah, to bring up from there the Ark of God, whose name is called by the name the Lord of hosts, who dwells between the cherubim. So, Baali Judah, it means lords of Judah. And in 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, it's also known as Kirjath Jerem, and it was a town located 10 miles west of Jerusalem. In the Ark of the Covenant, it represented the glorious reputation and the gracious presence of the Lord God to Israel. And the Ark of God was the Ark of the Covenant that contained the tablets of the law that Moses brought down from Mount Sinai. And it also contained a jar of manna and Aaron's rod that miraculously budded as confirmation of his leadership. And you probably remember us covering this back in the book of Exodus last year. And it rep represented the immediate presence and the glory of God in Israel. And the last time that we see the Ark of the Covenant mentioned was back in 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 1, when it came back from the land of the Philistines. And it sat in the house of Abinadab for 20 years. In verse 3-5 through 5 says, So they set the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on a hill, and Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart, and they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on a hill, occupying, accompanying, accompanying the ark of God. And Ahio went before the ark. Then David and all the house of Israel played music before the Lord on all kinds of instruments of fir wood, on harps, on stringed instruments, on tambourines, on sistrums and on symbols. So, back in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 6, verse 7, the Philistines, we saw that they used the cart to transport the ark, and that violated Old Testament law, as Old Testament law required that the sacred ark be carried by the sons of Kohath, which we studied just last year in the book of Numbers, chapter 3, verse 30 and 31. And there was to be the using of the poles as described in the book of Exodus 25, verse 12 through 15. And Uzzah and Ahio were descendants of Abinadab. They were most likely the grandsons. And Uzzah means strength and Ahio means friendly. In verse 6 and 7 it says, And when they came to Nachon's threshing floor, Uzzah put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah, and God had struck him there for his error, and he died there by the ark of God. And so, verse 6 and 7, no matter how innocently it was done, touching the ark was considered a direct violation of God's law. And the punishment behind it called for the death penalty. And this was a means of preserving the sense of God's holiness and the fear of drawing near to him without appropriate preparation. And Uzzah decided to disregard God's command, and we see that God chastises him, God strikes him. In verse 8 and 9 says, And David became angry because of the Lord's outbreak against Uzzah, and he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day, and so he said, How can the ark of the Lord come to me? And so probably anger directed at himself because of the calamity resulted from David's own carelessness. And we see that he was confused as to whether to carry the transportation of the ark to Jerusalem and wouldn't move it, fearing more death and calamity that might come upon him or the people. 
And it's likely that he waited to see the wrath of God subside, subside before moving the ark. In verse 10 and 11 says, So David would not move the ark of the Lord with him into the city of David, but David took it aside into the house of Obed, Edom, the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed, Edom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed, Edom, and all his household. So the term Gittite can refer to someone from the Philistine city of Gath. And the better way to look at it in this context of today's chapter is to see the terms related to Gath Ramon. And that was one of the Levitical cities as seen back in the book of Joshua 21 verse 24 and 25. And Odom, Odom, Edom is referred to as a Levite across First Chronicles from the family of Kohath. In Numbers chapter 4 verse 15 it commanded that this family within the tribe of Levi was to carry and to take care of the ark. And so verse 12 through 15 says, So it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed, Adom, and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed, Adom, to the city of David with gladness. And so it was when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, that he sacrificed oxen and fatted sheep. Then David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And so during these three months that the ark remained with Obed-Edom, the Lord blessed his family. And in the same way, God had blessed Obed-Edom, and David was confident with the presence of the ark. And the Lord would bless his house in many ways that would last forever, as we're going to see in our next study when we continue in chapter 7 next week. And in David's second attempt to bring the ark to Jerusalem, it was transported in the manner prescribed by the Old Testament law. And six paces is after the first six steps, not after every six steps. In the Hebrew, like other ancient and modern people, they had their physical expressions of religious joy as they praised God. And we see an elaborate, excessive, and over-the-top sacrifice that takes place. And the excessive sacrifice communicated atonement, consecration, and longing for fellowship. And later on, as we look, Lord willing, in the book at the book of First Chronicles, chapter fifteen, verse eleven through fifteen, we're going to see that David specifically commands the priests to carry the ark the right way on their shoulders. And David did not hold back in expressing worship with heartfelt worship. And David was genuine in his worship to God. We see that David was not focused on emotions. And he was not manipulated like many today are. In verse 16 through 19 says, Now the ark of the Lord came to the city of David. Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through the window and saw King David leaping and whirling before the Lord. And she despised them in her heart. So they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had erected for it. Then David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And when David had finished burning, uh, finished offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. Then he distributed among all the people, among the whole multitude of Israel, both the women and the men, to everyone a loaf of bread, a piece of meat and a cake of raisins. So all the people departed, every one to his house. And so verses 16 through 19, Michal's contempt for David is explained by her sarcastic remark, as we'll see in the next verse. And we see that she considers David unbridled, joyful, dancing 
as conduct unbefitting for the dignity and gravity of a king because it exposed him in some ways. And David, he made a tent for the Ark of the Covenant until a permanent building could be built. And in Psalm chapter 30, it could also refer to the possibility to this tent or David's own home. But uh, verse 20 says, Then David returned to bless his household, and Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids of the servants as one of the base fellows saint shamelessly uncovers himself. So David, he desired the same unavoidable success from the Lord as experienced in the household of Obed-Edom. And the attitude of Mitchell aborted the blessing at that time, but the Lord would bless David's house in the future, as we'll see in the next chapter. And we see the word uncovering taking place here, and it was a derogatory reference to the priestly attire that David wore in place of his royal garments. And verse 21 through 23 says, So David said to Michal, It was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father in all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore I will play music before the Lord, and I will be even more undignified than this, and will be humble in my own sight. But as for the maidservants of whom you have spoken, by them I will be held in honor. And therefore Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. And so chapter 6 wraps up right at the end right there. And David's actions were for the delight of the Lord and not for the maidens. And David, he viewed himself within humility here. And it was the humble whom the Lord would exalt, as you see in 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. And we see that this nagging wife of David had no children in which the Old Testament times, it was a, considered to be a curse to be childless. It was not like what we see today with modern day society that hates children and they think that if you have a lot of children then you're cursed you know it's a whole different world at this time period and it prevented her from providing a successor to david's throne from the family of saul so we see that there is a reason of something positive behind what takes place here and, uh, you know, I feel for David because if I was to dance, people would tell me to stop dancing. I mean, people tell me to stop singing as it is. So, you know, I, I, I feel for David in this text that he's getting picked on for dancing. And um, I just want to make a side comment that I don't believe David was a Pentecostal or, you know, a charismatic of some kind with the dancing part. Um, I absolutely have no issue with dancing you know, as part of worship, you know, but not in a way that looks like the club, if you know what I mean. But so to wrap up our study here, we see the bringing of the ark to Jerusalem, and we see it's done with great joy. And we see the first report of Uzzah being struck dead for touching the ark. And I know in the book of First Chronicles, we look at it there ahead. And we saw David's reaction of anger and fear. And we see that David left the ark with Obed-Edom. And the ark successfully came to Jerusalem. And some, you know, as I mentioned, may have considered David as a charismatic. But at this time period, we never think it's strange. You know, I, I think when it comes to the dancing part, you know, and worship and people, you know, criticize it or be really big supporters. I mean, look at sporting events today. You know, people will be dancing within the game when their team's winning after a victory. And, you know, so I believe personally that if you want to dance to express your worship to God, go ahead. And, you know, David brought everyone present into the worship experience, into the fellowship meal. And we see that his wife, Mitchell, complained about 
David's dancing attire outside of his royal robes. And some people will argue that David was wearing something almost like a man skirt or whatever you might think of with the hulas or uh, whatever that Hawaiian uh, dance is I can't think of right now. And many today would say that Mitchell was not very accepting and probably would call her a hateful bigot for not supporting David to be himself. But we see that David's rebuke of Mitchell and we see that Mitchell does not have a great life. She lives a cursed life in her time period of not being able to bear children. You know, it was a barrenness life. And that's going to wrap up our study today. We are actually 25% through this book of 2 Samuel. And I'll see you tomorrow as we're going to step out of our 2 Samuel study for another topical Saturday. So I hope you have a great weekend up ahead. God bless.